Hey everybody, welcome to MLSsoccer.com's match preview for the U.S. Bosnia matchup on Wednesday here with Andrew Wiebe. I'm Nick Fershaw. First off, the tune-in information, 2.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2, and there's a live chat on MLSsoccer.com. Down to the basics here, a lot of storylines to get to. Starting with the U.S. national team that's been very successful this summer, Andrew. No matter who they've put on the field, they've churned out a lot of wins. You go back to the Gold Cup and World Cup qualifiers. No matter what Jurgen Klinsmann has, he seems to be making the right decision. Yeah, 11 straight games, 11 wins. You can't argue with that, and Jurgen Klinsmann has been getting it right with all sorts of different players. As you said, a mix between those World Cup qualifying rosters and the Gold Cup roster. This one, a little bit different as well. You've got guys from both of those groups, ones that have really contributed to those wins in the hacks, as well as that Gold Cup championship. But you've got a group of four players, unproven guys that are in their first national team camp that may be called on to do some damage. The two big ones everyone's talking about, John Anthony Brooks and Aaron Johansson. Of course, Johansson may not even play in this game. His FIFA paperwork's still kind of in limbo. We'll have to wait and see on that. But John Anthony Brooks looks he'll probably get a start. That could be a challenge. We'll have to see how that plays into it because, look, I know U.S. fans want number 12, and I'm sure Jürgen Klinsmann does too. And Andrew, we've talked about this. Most of this roster is based in Europe. A lot of European players on this team and that gives Jurgen Klinsmann a chance to take a look at some of these guys who either haven't been in the camp for a while or maybe participated in qualifiers or the Gold Cup. Give me a few guys you're looking forward to see. Who has the most to prove here? Well look, we start in the back line with Tim Ream. He hasn't been in camp for about two years now. Coming over from Bolton, it's a toss-up. Was it because he had a short flight? They need cover at left back. Either way, he's got to prove he belongs. This is his opportunity back with the national team. In the midfield, Sasha Kleschen did not get called up for that Gold Cup squad. Alejandro Bedoya, mixed discrude. Those guys were there. They made impacts. He's got to prove that he can do the same because that competition in the midfield for Brazil is very, very tough. And then finally up top, Terrence Boyd, a young guy with a ton of promise. But with Aaron Johansson in the mix, you start to see that forward pool getting even more competitive. Can he prove he has what it takes even at his young age with Johansson possibly not playing? Well, there's only two uh, representatives from Major League Soccer. They're both from the Seattle Sounders here, Brad Evans and Eddie Johnson. And our very own Greg Lawless takes a deeper look at which guys were included and which guys were left off. Both Brad Evans and Eddie Johnson hailing from the Seattle Sounders, and I'm sure that Ziggy Schmidt, their head coach, is not thrilled that two of his mainstays are traveling halfway around the world for a midweek game in the middle of the season. However, this is a big opportunity for these two players, and here's why. Eddie Johnson, I'm not sure that he has convinced Jurgen Klinsmann that he is cemented into this roster quite yet. He's not a surefire starter for this side, and when he's come on as a substitute, he hasn't always succeeded. But he does bring something this team needs. Speed, the ability to get into the box and put the ball away. So if he can do this with all of these European forwards around him and prove that he belongs, that's a big step for him. For Brad Evans, this is another great opportunity for him to impress Klinsman and say that he belongs in the mix at right back. You have to imagine that Steve Chirundolo will get the nod if he's healthy. However, that's a big if, and after that you have Michael Parkhurst, Jeff Cameron, and yes, Evans vying for that spot. If Evans can do well against a pretty good attacking team in Bosnia, I think that Klinsman will have to keep him in the mix going forward. Now what about some of the MLS players who aren't there? You have to start with Clint Dempsey. I think Klinsman finally just said, you know what, I don't need to bring him in. He's obviously going to be a starter when he's ready to go for those qualifiers in September, but let's let him settle in a little bit in Seattle. Landon Donovan, he showed everything that he can do in the Gold Cup. I don't think Klinsman needs to call him in for this one. Besides, after all the travel with the Gold Cup, there's no reason to wear him down with a trip halfway around the world. And finally, Graham Zussi. Again, another player who has shown that he can succeed at right mid for the national team in the big games. Again, you don't need to call him up. Klinsman's going to use him when those qualifiers come around in September. And the same goes for the other guys like Clarence Goodson, Chris Wondolowski, Kyle Beckerman, to name a few. Klinsman knows what they can bring. He doesn't need them to show him anything more in Bosnia. Thanks, Greg. Now, Andrew, we've talked all about the U.S. national team. I want to talk a little bit about their opponents on Wednesday, and that's Bosnia, ranked 13th in the world in the latest FIFA rankings. This is a good team that's been on an unbeaten streak 
of their own. And this is the kind of team the U.S. national team will likely draw in the World Cup, a team they'll have to get by in the group stage if they want to get to the knockout stage. What do we expect? Yeah, you saw it this summer with the friendlies that Jurgen Klinsmann scheduled. Belgium and Germany, both teams, European-based, ones that you expect to see in those knockout stages, perhaps. Bosnia is certainly one of those teams, and he said it before that Belgium match. I would rather play Belgium once in El Salvador a number of times. I think this is great preparation for the U.S. ahead of those World Cup qualifiers in CONCACAF. But let's be honest, at this point, you can only get so much out of playing Jamaica, out of playing Honduras. You know those opponents. You know the strengths and weaknesses. You've got to test yourself, and you've got to go up against squads that you're going to face in the World Cup. And Bosnia, as it appears right now in World Cup qualifying, probably going to be one of those. Yeah, very good opponent for the U.S. Uh, on Wednesday. Our very own Simon Borg takes a look at the Bosnian roster. Bosnia-Herzegovina, not exactly the first name that comes to mind when you're thinking European powers, but they don't feel they're too far off from that elite group in this World Cup qualifying cycle. They're 13th and all-time high in the FIFA World Rankings, and they're flying when it comes to World Cup qualifying. They lead Group G, five wins, one draw, they're undefeated, 23 goals for, and only three against, and they've already taken care of their nearest competitor, Greece, with a win at home and a draw on the road. Everyone dreaming of Brazil in Sarajevo, and Safet Susic, the head coach of Bosnia, really hopes this game can bring everyone down to earth. He wants a tough game against a difficult opponent. He hopes the U.S. does that. So how does Safet Susic line them up? He uses a 4-4-2 diamond midfield formation. Think Real Salt Lake. The Javier Morales of the situation at attacking midfield, Zvedan Misimovic, a veteran who plays in China. And he, along with Mira Lempianic, who carved up the All-Stars at the All-Star game not too long ago, they are job, feed the forward duo of Edin Dzeko, who everyone knows from Manchester City, and Vedad Ibisevic, who Americans will be familiar with. He played at St. Louis University, was a star in the college ranks. But one key, I think, for the United States to take advantage of here is Nenad Lulic, the left back from Lazio. He's probably one of the most talented players on this team. He's also known as the son of the wind. That shows you how much attacking he does down the left side. I think the U.S. have to go with Alejandro Bedoya on the right very dynamic player and will occupy Lulic. On the right side is where I think the U.S. have an opportunity to take advantage of a weak spot. Ermin Bikacic is actually having his first cap for Bosnia. He's replacing the regular right back who's injured for this game. I think that's a weak spot as well as in goal. Amir Begovic for me, an average goalkeeper at best with Stoke City. So look, for the U.S., the formula is simple. How do you stop a 4-4-2 diamond? We see it in league play with Real Salt Lake. You play very organized, you play contain, reduce the spaces, and pressure the midfield. Don't let these guys feed the ball and have time on the ball. This side, very technical side, and also occupy the fullbacks. Keep them busy. If the U.S. does that, I think they have a great shot at getting a result in Sarajevo. Thanks, Simon. Final thoughts here. Again, the game is 2.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, ESPN2 and Unimas, and there's a live chat on MLSsoccer.com. Before we go, I have to get your prediction here. The U.S. on the road, tough game at Bosnia. What happens? Yeah, I think it's a 2-1 loss for the U.S. in this one, that 11-game winning streak over. I think the big key here is that that central defense is a little bit up in the air. Is John Anthony Books ready to step in? Jeff Cameron mostly played right back in midfield so far. I think Ed and Jekko, just too much to handle for them. 2-1, Josie Altador with a goal. Winning streak over, but a good learning lesson for uh, the Americans. Let us know what you think in the comment section below about the U.S. Bosnia game. Again, it's Wednesday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and Unimas. Enjoy the game.